This is the Bulls Chat Podcast. I am Joe Malone, and with me is the head coach and general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sanded. Coach, uh, good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It has been a uh, interesting uh, month for the North Iowa Bulls. I was looking back at the uh, schedule on the Bulls website, and the last league game that was in the standings was uh, middle of November. And uh, but the Bulls are still playing hockey and some very entertaining hockey over the weekend. We're going to go over uh, a couple of games: one against Car Shield. And uh, another against uh, Rochester, which was a great one on Saturday night. First, let's start with uh, Friday, 9-1 win over CarShield. First off, who is, what is CarShield? So CarShield is a U18 team that plays out of North American Prospects Hockey League in Apple. Um, they're, I, I believe when we played um, Friday, they were ranked somewhere between 10th and 20th in the country. Oh, wow. Which... Yeah, which, I mean, that that's a high-level midget program. Um, and, and we've known their coach. I've known their coach, J.P. Bielston, for many years. He had a, a a stint in his coaching career where he coached the St. Louis Junior Blues. And when when we knew that we could stay open and play, uh, I, I emailed Blake McNichol, our, our commissioner, and told him we'll play North American League teams, we'll play – NA3 teams, if they can get here and travel, we'll play the midget teams, like the NAPL teams, if there's any that want to come and play. And I think through the, the league office, they got it to Tony Zazowski, who handles all of the midget programs for, for the North American Hockey League. And JP reached out to me. He was the first team coach to, to reach out to me. And he said, hey, if we could do the Friday game, we'd love to help you out with that. And I said, hey, I'm working on a couple things with some NA3 teams, but at the end of the day, they couldn't do it, and uh, since he contacted us first, we, we gave him that opportunity, and we're super excited that they that they came up. I mean, this was a tough day for those kids. Like they got on a bus early in the morning in St. Louis, made the track up here, um, played the game, and then they had to go back to St. Louis Saturday to play a game Saturday and another game Sunday. So. Um, the score certainly isn't indicative of what that game could be if those kids weren't. I mean, I mean, it's a, certainly a situation to duress for those kids to do it that way. Well, first thing I noticed was, okay, so U18, but every single one of these kids is bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have a nice team. And, and I mean, they, they, they play with a ton of pace. They're physical. Uh, they, they have, obviously, you notice the size of their team. I mean, they they have a, a team that's built more like a junior team than a midget team. Uh, now, CarShield actually got the first goal of the game. They had the first lead of the game. Uh, the Bulls would go on to score the next nine goals of the game to uh, finish with the 9-1 win. I want to talk about a couple of uh, performances, a couple of players for the Bulls. First off, Caden Smith, first appearance, just joined the team this past week. Uh, he scores his uh, in his uh, first game for the Bulls. Tell us, what do we need to know about Caden Smith? I think Caden Smith is the prototypical forward that the North Iowa Bulls get involved with. I mean, he, he's a he's a crafty forward Minnesota guy from Lakeville, Minnesota. Uh, led his high school team in scoring. Um, plays plays more of a, a, a shifty game than a straight up power game. Obviously, he, he's I mean he's he's not a huge guy. I think he's five ten, probably one sixty five, one hundred and seventy pounds. But he gets up and down the rink pretty well, and he and he uses the entire surface uh, for himself and to help create uh, opportunities for his line mates as well. Now, when you get a player, and I think you have several on the team that were their high school team leaders, is that tough um, getting them to shift into, you don't need to be the guy everything goes through. Uh, you've got a bunch of teammates with you. You know what? That's a great point, Joe. And, I mean, we're, we're still having kids who are kind of struggling with the structure that we use inside of our system dynamics for our team that they were as the leading scorer, their job was really to just to go out and hound pucks, get pucks and try to get them in uh, the opposition's net where our, our game is a bit more structured, where they have to be in certain spots at certain times, uh, depending upon where the puck is, is on the rink. And we, we have some kids that are still struggling with that, but, it, when when the kids get here and they realize the amount of talent that's here and that they know they're going to have good line mates, it's everybody kind of jumps into it pretty quickly and, and realizes that I just can go out and play. I don't have to put that much pressure on myself that I have to lead this team in scoring. 
Uh, it's like, you know, if you do see an opportunity to be flashy and shoot, you know, take it, though, you know, as long oh. as you're not out of position. Absolutely. Now, one of the other players uh, that we got to see on the ice this weekend was uh, Brendan Sloth, hometown from Anoka. Got to like that. Um, tell us about <laughs> Brendan Sloth. Okay, so I, I know this was the first time for uh, our fans to see Brendan Sloth in action. And you understand the landscape. You and I are both from Anoka. Brendan actually lives, his family lives five houses down from mine at home. So oh, wow. I see, I see a lot of Brendan. I saw him all summer long out, out doing workouts, running through the neighborhood. And, um, w- when it, when it became evident and available, uh, that, that he was going to be available to play, I jumped on it right away. He did some of our summer skates with us this summer and, you know, being an Anoka kid and living in the living in the neighborhood, I just wanted to make sure. Similar to like Jack Giddings back a few years back, mm-hmm. uh, Jack lived in my neighborhood too at home. And when you can get those kids that you know, um, that know the program, they trust the program. Um, you want to get them every time. And, and Brendan was a no brainer. We we did need to add a, at least another defenseman at that time. So it, it really worked out that we got a kid with a ton of experience, ton of poise. Uh, and he's like, obviously, he's a he's a bigger defender. He, he's gonna, he's an intimidating figure out there. Well, and it's always fun for me, just personally, and I guess um, I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but um, I, I get joy out of saying Anoka, Minnesota, as part of the starting lineup. <laughs> it's just I feel like you know, no knock on your Lake Bills or your New Alms or any other cities, but I, I just love saying that one during the starting lineups. Anoka Pride, go Tornadoes. Exactly, exactly. Uh, one more player to talk about from uh, Friday night. Joe Deninger was back in net. And uh, uh, tell me about Joe and, and what do you thought of his performance? You know, he had the one early goal, but other than that, shut things down. Yeah, you know, J- Joe. Joe's coming off of uh, concussion protocol and a lengthy one at that. So this was his first available Time to be able to play. Uh, he had a good week of practice, and, and actually, him and him and uh, Evan Babacool both. The idea was to split that game with those two. With Joe getting the start, he had the more reps in practice uh, last week, uh, and, and actually, like Evan coming off of uh, a COVID quarantine situation, so just wanted to get those guys back in and some game time and, and get get the reflexes and all back back in line again. Now, next up was Saturday night uh, against Rochester, and both of these games are exhibition games, and uh, this did not seem like an exhibition contest. This seemed like we are you know, playing for a spot in the championship on the line, a back-and-forth battle all night, and there was a, a really good you know, socially distanced crowd at the Mason City Arena. They got to see one heck of a game. Unfortunately, didn't go the Bulls' way in the end with a, a 5-4 overtime loss. But uh, tell me your thoughts on that game and the back and forth nature of it. I, I tell you what, I, I thought it was a tremendous hockey game, and, and even you, you're always uh, disappointed when you don't win hockey games, and, and, and that's always the ultimate goal is to come out uh, and be the winner at the end. But I got we got done talking with the kids, and I got up, uh, you know, just a little bit away from the game, and my wife said, "Man, that was a really good hockey game." And just the excitement in her voice about watching a game like that. And hopefully our fans appreciate that. And certainly we cannot thank Rochester enough. I mean, if they, they paid the expense to put their kids on a bus and bring them up for an exhibition game, which in this whole COVID landscape, the, the money is not freely flowing for junior hockey teams right now because they can't have um, fans in their building. And certainly fans are limited everywhere, even when you can have fans in the building. So I, I thought it was a great hockey game. We we appreciate and respect that Rochester team and their staff. Uh, Chris Ratzloff does a great job there with, with that team there. And, and it would be nice to be able to play them more often. I think there's a natural rivalry there with the distance uh, and, and the caliber of the teams. I mean, anytime you can add a game like that to your schedule, I, I think we do it 100% of the time. Now, one thing that the Bulls did take advantage of late in the second period in that game was a five-on-three power play. It started with a, a five-minute major against uh, Rochester. Then they tacked on a two-minute minor, and it's like, uh, it's go time. I mean, do you, do you tell uh, the skaters on the ice, you shoot quicker, take advantage of the fact that you've got this much more open space? How do you work through a five-on-three? I, I think the, 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 the immediate goal of five-on-three is to get like a really high quality shots and attempts. So you're trying to get it to the front of the net where 
a guy has maybe a second or two at a uh, time to get a look and release a shot, or you're moving it across the net where the goalie has to move it, and he just doesn't have time to get there, so you get a tap in or on the backside. But you're you're looking for those one, two, three quality attempts if you can get them to try to create that goal on the five on three. Yeah, because uh, just like the Bulls did, um, just about 20 seconds into the five on three, you get that goal. Yeah, you get a guy out of the penalty box, but then you still have one in there, and you still get to uh, uh, take advantage of that odd man opportunity. Now, an odd man opportunity is what kind of led to Rochester winning this game in overtime. We talked about the back-and-forth nature of it. Late in the third period, uh, Bulls got, I think it was a too many men on the ice penalty or something like that. Yeah, that's a tough penalty to take. And I mean, our our kids were excited. They were in the game, and and we just had a guy leave the bench early and play the puck right there in front of the bench. So it's it's really, it's it's frustrating because you you hope your kids are just, you got to wait a little bit longer before you can jump out there. And definitely if you're going to play the puck right away, but we we chalk it up to it being an exciting game and, and, things happen and that that's a good opportunity for us to have to defend against and obviously that they scored on the five on or on the four on three power play in overtime but it's, it's another learning lesson that we can take away from a game where you know mental mistakes and that's just a, it's a mental mistake that uh kids jump out there early and play it but it's something you learn from. Well, you, you preach speed you, and all that sort of stuff, and then it's like, but coach, you tell me to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was just Double trying to do what sword. you said. <laughs> right. Now, um, I want to ask you about this. Uh, with overtime being three-on-three, three, with the penalty, uh, the uh, Rochester gets the extra skater. Is it different doing a four-on-three uh, versus a five-on-four when it comes to trying to shut down their offensive opportunities? Yeah, you you basically run your four on three like a five on three penalty oh. kill. Yeah, it's 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 similar to the five on three. You just have one less guy you got to worry about, <laughs> but the formation is basically the same. Now, um, want to talk a little bit about Cal Noss? He had a, a big goal in that game on Saturday night and four assists in the game on Friday night. Uh, it was kind of an offensive uh, weekend for Cal Noss uh, from the defensive position. You know, yeah, look at what Cal's doing. I mean, he, he's leading our, our team in scoring in the regular season standing. Uh, standing. So, like, we're not surprised when Cal does well offensively. But I think this you, you certainly can look at this as a, a big breakout for him on a weekend where he gets five points in two games. And, and I, I know on, on Friday night, a pair of those assists came like 12 seconds apart. So, it, it's pretty obvious that he's seeing the ice well. He's making plays. He's getting pucks to the net. And he scored a beauty on Saturday night after Rochester tied it up where we were able to jump back ahead by a goal. Yeah, a, uh, a laser beam or a missile. I can't remember what Austin called it on the play-by-play, but it was <laughs> it was uh, something more grandiose than just a shot, and it was definitely that. Now, uh, what uh, fans want to know is, what's next? What, what are the Bulls doing? Uh, are we playing at home? Who are we playing? All that sort of stuff. So here's what we have in play right now with the with the with shutdown in Minnesota due to the COVID restrictions. It does not appear that Alexandria and Wilmer are coming to town. I mean, we're we've pretty much been told by our league that we can go ahead and market uh, an event that we're going to call the North Iowa Bulls Holiday Classic. Uh, putting it together in a week week's time is going to be challenging, but but we're up for that challenge. And, and what that's going to entail is. We're going to bring the Sheridan Hawks from the Frontier Division of our of the NHL in and the St. Louis Junior Blues, who's a common opponent normally for us, out of the Central Division of the NHL. We're going to play Sheridan on Thursday night at 7.30. We'll play St. Louis Friday night at 7.30. We'll play Sheridan again Saturday night at 7.30, and then St. Louis at noon on Sunday. But amongst all those Bulls games, we're also going to have games where Sheridan and St. Louis will face off against each other at different times. Probably noon is going to be the game time on those. So there's going to be a ton of hockey here at the Mason City Arena this weekend, starting Thursday night with North Iowa and Sheridan. And uh, ticket info will be available, uh, well, depending on when you listen to this podcast, um, at NorthIowaBulls.com, info on when tickets will go on sale, also all of the uh, social media accounts, um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the stuff. 
Yeah, you'll be able to find the info <laughs> on uh, getting tickets. But uh, that that's very cool. And if we can have uh, another game or two like we had with, against Rochester, man, uh, fans need to get in the stands to see that. Yeah, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to this. Sh- Sheridan's on top of the Frontier Division out there. And uh, as we know, our fans know St. Louis pretty well. They're always the top team in the Central Division. So the, the, the goal and the idea when you're going to play exhibition games is to play the best teams possible to get the best games for your fans in here as possible. And, and we feel like we're doing a great job of getting some good teams in here for uh, what, what's going to look to be a, a really fun weekend of hockey for everybody involved. Excellent. Looking forward to it. The Bulls Holiday Classic coming up this weekend. Uh, Coach, General Manager Todd Sandin, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate it.